afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just quickly, I'll give you a rundown. Um, joining us today are the, is the president and CEO of Hockey Entertainment, John Beach, and I know you're right, and the president of hockey operations for the Calgary Flames. We'll have opening remarks from John, followed by John, and then we'll get into uh, some Q&A, some opportunities to ask some questions to both John and Don. So with that, I'll turn it over to John Beach. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for coming down on such short notice. Uh, earlier today, we announced that the Calgary Flames and Brad Tree Living have mutually agreed to part ways. Brad's contract expires on June 30th, and he will not return as the Flames general manager for next season. On behalf of the Flames' ownership, management, and fans, we want to sincerely thank Brad for his nine years of dedication to our organization and our city. You'd be hard pressed to find a harder worker and a harder manager than Brad. He brought the best to the rink each and every day, and for that, we were very grateful. But as an organization, we need to move on. We're pleased to announce that Don Maloney has been promoted to president of hockey operations effect immediately. He will also hold the position of interim general manager. Don joined us back in 2016 and has held the position of Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations since 2017. Don's experience is extensive and includes nine seasons as the Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Arizona Coyotes, and 10 seasons as a member of the New York Rangers front office, serving as the team's Vice President of Player Personnel and Assistant General Manager. Don's first priority will be to help us secure the services of a new General Manager, and that's a process that will begin today. And at this time, I'll turn the mic over to Don. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, today is not a good day for me. It's not. Um, you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs start tonight, and uh, we're not playing, number one. Number two is, uh, you know, emotional, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. You know, Brad Tribling is a good friend. He, uh, <clears throat> and I think a very good hockey man. He left us. Um, for his reasons. But we move on. And uh, I, I do want to thank the ownership group of Calgary Sports and Entertainment. Um, I was certainly John for keeping me on. Uh, you know, I might have, if I was in their place, I might have took me to the city line and told me to face east and start walking and never return <laughs> based on the job we did this year. Um, my first task uh, from John and the ownership is to do a deep analysis of this season. Um, we uh, we uh, had a team, have a team that I believe um, should have been in the playoffs, not only make the playoffs, but to be a, a team, a hard out in the playoffs. We didn't, and we, uh, we uh, failed to achieve, uh, and that starts at the management level, which I was a part of. It's uh, the coaching, the players, the training, the entire organization. We have to do a deep look in how we operate how we make uh, decisions and uh, and fix it. We have a good team here. We have good players here. Uh, no question we'll be back next season better and hungrier, but uh, you know, we can't just keep talking about it. We have to do it. So uh, I'm, uh, like I said, it's very, very mixed uh, feelings on my part um, that I'm here, but uh, we're going to uh, work very, very hard to bring a championship team uh, to Calgary, and that's the goal. Okay, with that, we'll open the questions. Don, what's your timeline in terms of uh, hiring a general manager? Um, right now, I'm still, Eric, in the evaluation process of the, the team. Um, in my role, my former role, I, I was around the team a lot, more so in the last two or three months, just to try and get a handle on what, what was going on. Um, I, uh, so I, you know, I, I, but I was still on the periphery of it, I felt, you know, just, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time around the, the players, and, uh, um, and I felt that was, you know, Brad and Daryl, and, uh, you know, that that's the voices, um, so now it's a deep dive for me to, to get to the players, get to the staff, uh, and find out from them firsthand what they think uh, the issues are that why we're sitting here today and not suiting up for a game tonight or tomorrow night. So I don't have a timeline in the sense of, uh, 
I don't have a list of, uh, of uh, names. Um, one thing, John and I will be working on this together. I, uh, you know, John had a very good suggestion yesterday when we talked about it, is to we'll get the, uh, the uh, format in place, the uh, template per se, what do we want in a, in a GM? Uh, what are we looking for? What's important um, for Calgary? And, and, and uh, you know, obviously uh, John has ideas, I have ideas through my experience, and together we're going to figure out what we need for this group of players and how we bring uh, success here. So we haven't started that process. I don't see it dragging out for a year and a half, nor do I think it's going to be, you know, Friday that we're going to parade out a, uh, a new manager. Is it safe to say, sorry, I just want to follow, is it safe to say that this was a, this came up uh, together quite quickly for you in terms of your expanded role with the organization? Um, no. Uh, well, no, we, we had some um, conversations this season. Of, uh, you know, Brad, as you all know, and it's reported, uh, uh, was uh, offered an extension, uh, was wanted back uh, um, in, in training camp to begin and, and several times. Um, so there was a point that uh, John and I had a conversation and in full transparency with, with Brad. Uh, the first thing John asked me, uh, are you guys a, uh, a partnership? Uh, do you go, guys both go together? And, uh, and uh, my, my feeling was I, I, I like it in Calgary. I like the people. I like the, I like the personnel. I like the, the staff. I like working with them. Um, and really, I, I thought for sure Brad would, would resign. And I'm as close to him as anybody. And up to when he told me Wednesday he couldn't do it, that was the first time that uh, that the re reality was that uh, that he is uh, he just needs to take some time. And that and that job, the general manager's job, I've I've done it a long time. One of the things John had asked me when we originally met was, um, "Do you want to be the manager?" And I just I can do the job, I know the job, I've done a long time, but I don't think I'm the right person for this team. I think you need somebody younger, progressive, inventive, uh, hockey acumen and, uh, and background certainly plays a part, but we're going to get the best person we think we can win with and, uh, and then support that person. So, um, so we had some conversations of what happens in the worst case scenario that, John, that Brad does leave. and. Uh, and this is this is why I'm sitting here today. Getting the input from the players, uh, getting the input from the players. Sorry, were you involved in any of the exit meetings or anything like that? Yeah, I saw I sat in in all the exit meetings um, with all the players, and uh, and we've gone through the coaching staff. I'm meeting Daryl tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or either tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on. He has some family things he's taking care of, and uh, there's a few other things I'm looking at, and I'll be in a better position to. You know, I'll have a better handle on, um, you know, the ideas that people have of why we so badly underachieved. What's, uh, was there any reason Brad gave either of you about why he wasn't uh, going to come back? You know, uh, decisions like this are really difficult, and there's lots of layers to the onion, if you like. And what we're not going to do today is peel back the onion into the layers. Uh, we had good conversations with Brad. Um, Brad and I will remain friends. There's no door slamming. But we agreed that we're going to part ways. And, and there is a perception that management and coaching staff maybe weren't aligned this season. Imagine that was any factor at all? Or? Again, I'm not going to get into the granularity of this. It's a tough enough decision today, and we got to get our eyes on the horizon and go forward now versus uh, grinding through that. Don, what, uh, what, what is the status of your assistant general managers or the, the assistant general managers under Brad? Um, they, uh, they're certainly candidates and strong candidates for the position um, but we also realized we, we, we would be short-sighted not to go out there and find the, the best candidate and maybe they, maybe one of them is so um, we haven't even started that process yet but certainly both Craig Conroy and uh, Brad Treeling um, obviously Chris Snow is a very important part of this organization but with his health reasons obviously he's but he'll be continue to be a very important part of our management group. Just to follow on that, are any of them under contract right now? They're all under contract. Sorry, they, have any been extended, I should say? We're not going to go through a public list of every staff member. We have 300 full-time staff members. We don't publish when the, when the contracts are up for renewal and when we renew them. Currently, everyone in our staff is under contract. John, 
understanding yeah. you don't want to peel back the onion today, as you said. Is it a concern for the organization when someone in the general manager's role says, no thanks, I'm ready to move on? Um, well, again, there's a lot that goes into this, um, and, and uh, we attempted early on to. And then Brad and I both agreed to pause the decision when he wasn't prepared to make it back early on, so we paused it. Um, and then we get to this point in time that we're over, we're out of the playoffs, and we meet again. And so at that point in time, we both agree maybe we shouldn't extend. John, over the past sort of calendar year, um, Johnny Gaudreau, Matthew Kachuk, now Brad Trela, Bang, there have been a number of fairly prominent people who have chosen not to be here and not to stay with the Flames organization. Why do you think that is, and, and what can be done to make this more desirable? Yeah, I don't think we're going to get into this is some sort of snowball rolling down a hill. I think each one of those have individual circumstances and reasons for their decisions. And so I'm not going to retrade and rehash the last two, and I'm not going to get too deep on this one. We have a great organization. We have a great city. We, got a, we have a really good team. I'm, I'm with Don on this. Man, man oh, man. Uh, this is painful to come into work today on a Monday and not be in the playoffs. We have a good team. We've got to make some decisions and go forward and have better success next year. Don, does Daryl Sutter your coach next season, or does that have to be reviewed? I am uh, reviewing everything in the organization, in management, coaching, players, scouting, um, how we, first of all, with the idea that what happened and why we underachieve and, and how we make this the best organization to, to chain our goals. Yeah, for both of you, Don, it's, it's, it's pretty evident on your face today how hard this is. Um, John, is that about as difficult a resignation situation as you've ever been involved in in business when Brad and you kind of had that hard end of the line conversation? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, and Brad, Brad's a great guy, and, and we talked, we're going to have bourbons this summer at the lake because he's got a place out in the Okanagan, and we, we go uh, hang out there as well. And so we're going to remain friends. And, uh, you know, you kind of you get it. Uh, he's been here nine years. These are really high-pressure jobs. They're exhausting at times. And, 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 you know, you can say that they look glamorous and it's all the fun, but, but it's, it's hard work. And, and it comes a point in time, whether you're a general manager or you're something else, that, that you come to a conclusion that, boy, maybe I need to give my body and my brain a break. So, yeah, I, it, it is tough. Yeah. But I think, Lou, I think part of it, if you think back last summer and the difficult the challenges that we had with, you know, the players that were leaving us and, and the, the, the job that Brad did, uh, to, and that's, you know, that's him. You know, with the, the work he put in and the, the agents and the players and the teams, the trades, uh, you know, he, we're, we were in here all August, and I, I, you know, I'm on the sidelines and trying to help, but he's the one that's making all the calls till midnight, and I, I really do think it uh, it took his toll. And after eight nine years, he he just needs a uh, needs a break, he needs a break from uh, what he was doing, were and he'll told? be. Oh, sorry. Were you told before or after <clears throat> the Sharps game that Brad wouldn't be back? What were you told? Well, I, I had a meet. I, you know, Brad. We talk every day, five times a day. He, he came into my office and sat down, and we were just, we were just talking. It was just he wasn't told. Well, that was the first time he actually said, "I, I don't think I'm going to be coming back." Um, that was on Wednesday morning, and uh, then he met with John obviously after we uh, our season ended, uh, and gave, and obviously John and Brad spoke. So. Um, Sort of. Uh, save for um, 2004, this organization hasn't gotten out of the second round since the Stanley Cup back in the late 1989, and fans are climbing for a rebuild. Like after this type of season, do you anticipate sort of a fundamental shift in how this organization runs its hockey operations? Given there hasn't been that real playoff run in. in Close to 20 years now. Yeah, we're all dying for a deeper playoff run. There's no doubt about it. But you know, we can take a deep breath here, and and kind of, and that's what Don's going to do, and take a look. And you're going to look at both. You're going to talk to the players, and you're going to do a deep dive in the analytics as well. And and before you overreact, you don't want to underreact, but you want to overreact because you know what we have? We have a Vesna nominated goalie. I, I would keep him next year, and I can't wait to see Jacob come back and play next year. And and we've got a really strong defense. And you watch Mackenzie Wigger took some time to kind of get in. But boy, the second half of the season, awesome. And we've got a great, we got a, we got a great lineup that underperformed. So before we start, 
you use the word not me, I'm not allowed to ever use the word rebuild, but, but no, we're not going to overreact here. Take our time, do the analysis, come up with the next step. Everyone a year ago, by the way, looked at us and went, holy mackerel, right? And that's why you drop the puck and play the game. And it didn't quite play out the way we thought it would, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, a year ago, everyone was like a coronation here. And so welcome to sports. And, and there isn't just an A to a B. If there was, everyone else would be doing it, but it's, it's hard. But we're going to do our best. Don, I was just going to say that I, I know it's disappointing, obviously, because you and Brad were good friends. But in the same sense, it is probably pretty exciting for you that you're going to have your footprint on this thing and from the top down sort of looking at this entire organization. You, you know, Brad, uh, he treated me like a partner, you know. Yes, my role here, I, and I treated Brad when he was in Arizona. We were partners. I mean, titles, titles really aren't important to me. Um, it's certainly I, I'm, I'm thankful to, to to be able to have this opportunity to uh, help put this thing back on the direction that we we need to be on to win a cup. So, but I, I you know, I'm not popping champagne and uh, doing uh, backflips and uh, today. And this, there's a lot of work here that we have to do, and and and. Uh, get some answers to why we're sitting here today. Go to Moses and then I believe Darren. Moses, go. Don, can you uh, speak to, uh, I, I guess it's still fresh and the, the journey still begins for you today, but the interest uh, for the job, have you already seen text messages, emails, that sort of thing? You know, people just currying favor with you, just trying to see if that GM job is is one that uh, is still available for it. For I could show you my phone right now <laughs> since 10:30. I, 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 I left mine upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It there's people texting me that I haven't heard of in 15 years that are saying, you know what? I think I can do the job. You know, and uh, uh, but you know, uh, with Don, there might be some sportscasters. That yeah, oh that yeah, I'm sure. The, uh, uh, call John, please. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've got enough for of, sure. uh, problems, but no, it, it's. Uh, yeah, again, prior to the obviously the uh, the, the, the statement uh, put out, it, it was very uh, confidential in the sense that we didn't you know, nothing really leaked, obviously. But certainly, you'll hear from pl people that had had the role in the past and have experience. And uh, and again, it's all part of kind of finding uh, finding that right person. Darren, do you have a question? Do you could... Yeah, just a bit unrelated though. So if we want to just exhaust, okay, we'll go to Eric, and then we'll go to Wes. Go ahead, Eric. You you joked about you're not allowed to use the word rebuild. Is there not an understanding though that at some point in the evolution of every organization in every pro sport, at some point a rebuild it cannot be out of the question? Yeah, I think you have to look at the it's a point in time, Eric, for sure. And you gotta look at the assets you have in front of you and decide. And we would have done that a year ago, quite frankly. Uh, when, when we had a deal on the table um, uh, for Matthew, there was there was a rebuild a deal and then there's a build the team because we've got a lot of good pieces point in time. So there was a reflection point a year ago. And that'll be a point in time and we'll reflect again at the right point in time. Go ahead, Wes. Don, do you expect to see Brad in another general manager role soon? Soon, no. Some point, yes. Uh, he's very good. He's uh, right. Uh, he, just, he just needs a mental break for a little bit. Uh, and, and if that's what he wants to do. Uh, you know, he has a lot of things in his life that he could do. Um, but no, to me, if, if he is available down the road, I, I'm sure he'll be on, on any team's list of interview lists, in my opinion. I think he's that good. Go ahead, Julian. Uh, it was mentioned in the release that uh, the next candidate would want to build upon the work that Brad has done. I was just wondering if you can go into more detail about what exactly you're looking for in the next general manager for the Calgary Flames. Well, again, we really haven't. I, I haven't started to focus on that at all. I'm, my my task right now is is has been for the last four days is is this year and the analysis we're doing uh, for what happened and how we move forward in in the, and just to get a better handle on what we think went wrong. Once we start the process of getting ideas to uh, what we're looking for in that role. Um, and that's going to take some time. It's going to be looking for ins uh, insights from John and his business experience. We have people here in the office that are experienced, and uh, I, certainly part of the process is reaching out to the people that I know uh, from being in the game so long. Uh, you know, it's the, 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 the people you really, really like and respect to say, do you have any ideas on a, on a manager? Who's the, next, who's the next guy? Who's the next really sharp guy that's ready for a, ready for a 
shot at the So, so, so I'll, lay, I'll layer on that a little bit, right? So you're going to talk about a decision matrix, and you're going to come up with the qualities that you'd want, right? And you're going to start with leadership. And, and, and you can go to your Stephen Covey leadership books and determine what the characteristics of a strong leader are. But you're talking about someone you trust, someone that's got uh, great communication skills. Um, and so you go through the list. So we're going to come up with a matrix, and some of it's going to be peer leadership. And then you're going to narrow down into subject matter expert. And, 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 uh, and then you're going to get into other characteristics like energy and, and ability to deal with stress. And so there's, yeah, there's a whole approach here that we'll take, and, and you'll, you'll apply that methodology. Okay, I think we'll go to the last question for Darren. John, um, since we came up on Friday, uh, can you update us on the state of ARENA? Uh, any ARENA discussions that are going on? So I can't hear you. Your phone broke up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I can't say much publicly. What I, what I can say is, is what we've actually said and that Sonia Sharp has said from the Event Centre Committee uh, is that there are conversations going on, uh, which is a good thing, um, but that's about as much as we can say at this point. Okay, kind of related to that big picture, any concerns about the attendance down the stretch, not many sell-ups when this team was pushing for a spot? You know what, if I told you we were really excited for how we ended the year and we had projections as to how we thought we'd come out of COVID and where we ended up and we did better than we thought we would. So we're, 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 pretty, we're pretty encouraged by, by what happened. Were the last couple of games soft? Yeah, they were. Uh, we were seven points out of a playoff spot when we were trying to sell tickets for the last four games. That's never helpful. He's got to do a better job so we don't have that hard sell to do. But no, we're, 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 really, we're really happy other than not being in the playoffs, which is a gut punch. Uh, we've had a, we've had a good year, and we really appreciate all the support of the fans. It's been awesome. Okay, sorry. Uh, one more question, or is Salam to conclude? Sure, uh, Don. You mentioned you were you were in on player exit interviews. Were there any themes, or what was the feedback that guys gave you as to what went wrong on the ice or in the room? What what were themes that they touched on in those meetings? You know, Salam, I'm I'm really not. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about that today. Um, just. Uh, there will be a time we can talk about it. I'm not through my evaluation, and and you know, in these interviews, there's a lot said. We I made a point of of a lot of times these exit interviews are a 10 minute, uh, you know, hello, how are you, and uh, you know, what do you think? Where what are you in the summer? And you know, good luck, you know, and if you need help, call us. But this was a sort of an in, in, uh, in depth uh, interview process, so I'm not in a position that I want to speak on it. I still have to digest it and. Uh, and I don't know about you, when I do an interview, I take a lot of notes and, uh, and then I have to summarize the notes and then digest the notes and I'm, you know, I'm not there yet. Okay, we'll conclude there. Thank you. Thanks everybody everyone. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.